Hello ladies and gentlemen, the title of this video is the Asset-Based Disorders and because it's an important topic, so I decided to make a video about it. Let's go back to high school. Do you remember the equation of Henderson and Hasselbeck? pH is equal to pKa plus log base over acid. The pH of plasma is equal to pKa of plasma plus log the concentration of HCO3 minus over the concentration of CO2. The concentration of CO2 is equal to alpha, which is the coefficient of solubility of CO2 in plasma, times the partial pressure of CO2. This equation relates the carbon dioxide to hydrogen and bicarbonate like so. CO2 combined with water form the carbonic acid, which dissociates spontaneously to form H plus and H2O3 minus. Now let's calculate the normal value of the pH of blood. The normal values of PCO2 and HCO3- are given. The pKa of plasma is 6.1 and the alpha, the coefficient of solubility of CO2 in plasma is given as 0.23. So the pH is equal to 7.4. The normal range of blood pH is between 7.35 and 7.45. If the pH is lower than 7.35, it's an acidemia. It's, if it's higher than 7.45, it's an alkalemia. Acidosis and alkalosis are used to describe the processes leading to acidemia and alkalemia respectively. The acid-based disorders are pathologic changes in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide or serum bicarbonate that typically produce abnormal arterial pH. These conditions can be categorized as acidosis or alkalosis and have a resp respiratory or metabolic origin depending on the cause of the imbalance. In order to identify the primary disturbance or the primary change, if it's metabolic or respiratory, we need to know if the primary change in, in pH is due to an alteration in serum HCO3- minus or in the partial pressure of CO2. Now let's start with the acid-base disturbance. If we add acid to our body, the equation will go to the left, which increase the concentration of CO2. Fortunately, our lungs will work harder to get rid of this via hyperventilation, which brings down CO2. So CO2 is the respiratory component. The lungs are known for, the fast for being a fast responding system for the compensation of the acid base disturbance. If the primary problem that drops the pH is CO2, we call it respiratory acidosis. While if pCO2 decreases, which drives the pH, the primary change is called respiratory alkalosis. The other component of the equation of Henderson Hasselbach is the bicarbonate. It is known as a metabolic component regulated by kidneys, and this is a slow regulation that takes several days. If the change in pH is due to an abnormal values of bicarbonate, it is called a metabolic problem. The pH and the concentration of HCO3- are directly proportional. If the concentration of HCO3- decreases, the pH will decrease too, leading to a metabolic acidosis. If the concentration of HCO3- increases, this will increase also the pH and it will lead to a metabolic alkalosis as a primary change. The compensation mechanisms begin to correct the pH whenever an acid-base disorder is present. If the compensation mechanism can return the pH completely to normal, it's called fully compensated. When it cannot return the pH to normal, we have two cases, the partial compensation and the non-compensation. First, we will solve a case with an uncompensated acid-base disorder. In this case, the, the patient blood pH is 7.22. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 60 mm of mercury. The concentration of bicarbonate is 24 mmol per liter. The question is, what is the patient diagnosis? First of all, we have to identify if it's an acidosis or alkalosis based on pH. The pH of this patient's blood is 7.22. It's lower than the normal, so this is an acidosis. The second step is to identify the primary change responsible for the abnormal value of pH. 
The partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 60. It's higher than the normal range. When the partial pressure of carbon dioxide increases, it decreases the pH. As since the pH is already low, so we say that the primary change is respiratory acidosis since it's related to the partial pressure of CO2. The third step is determining whether there is a compensation or not. Now we have to look at the other component of the Anderson and Hasselbalch equation, which is the concentration of bicarbonate. If the concentration of bicarbonate is normal, so there is no compensation. If the concentration of bicarbonate is abnormal and the pH is abnormal too, so we say there is a partial metabolic compensation. Now let's look at our values here. The concentration of bicarbonate is 24. It's within the normal range, so there is no metabolic compensation. And the patient diagnosis will be an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. Next, we will talk about the partially compensated acid-base disorder. In this case, the patient blood pH 7.33, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 60 mm of mercury, and the concentration of bicarbonate is 34 millimol per liter. And the question is, what is the patient diagnosis? As I already said, we start by identifying if it's an acidosis or an alkalosis. The pH of this patient is 7.33, it's lower than the normal, so it's an acidosis. To identify the primary change, we, th we start by looking at one of the components of the henderson hasselbeck equation. Let's start, for example, by the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. It's 60, higher than the normal range. And when the partial pressure of CO2 increases, it decreases the pH. As since the pH is low, 7.33, so this is the primary change called respiratory acidosis. What if you start by looking at the concentration of the bicarbonate? Do you get the same result or not? The concentration of bicarbonate is 34. It's higher than the normal. When the concentration of bicarbonate increases, it increases the pH too, since they are directly proportional. But the pH is not high, it's low. So this is not the primary change. The primary change is not metabolic. This is a compensation. So we say that there is a metabolic compensation. And since the pH is not normal, so this is a partial compensation, the patient diagnosis is respiratory acidosis with partial metabolic compensation. Sometimes the pH is normal, but the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and the concentration of bicarbonate are abnormal. This reflects a fully compensated acid-base disorder. Now let's take a look at this case. A patient came to the hospital hyperventilating. Its blood pH is 7.41. It's within the range, so the pH is normal. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 26 mm of mercury, lower than the normal range. When the partial pressure of carbon dioxide decreases, it will increase the pH, but the pH of this patient isn't high. So we cannot say that this is the primary change. Let's take a look at the concentration of HCO3- to see if it's the primary change. The concentration of bicarbonate is 16 millimol per liter. It's lower than the normal. And when the concentration of bicarbonate decreases, it will decrease the pH. But once again, the pH is not low. So this is not the primary change. In such case, we need to know the reason of hospitalization in order to know which component leads to the primary change. And since he came for hyperventilation, so the cause is related to the partial pressure of CO2. Since the partial pressure of CO2 is low, it will increase the pH, and the primary change is respiratory alkalosis. The change in the concentration of bicarbonate it uh, is due to the compensation mechanism. The concentration of bicarbonate decreased in order to, in to decrease the pH. And this is the metabolic compensation. And since the pH value is normal, so we can say it's a complete or full compensation. And this patient diagnosis is a respiratory, a respiratory alkalosis with full metabolic compensation. Thank you for your attention. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.